Hi, my name is Dr. Ian Katz, and I thought I'd just uh, describe uh, what happens with deeper levels in the dermatopathology laboratory. So, when a specimen arrives in the laboratory, it's given a unique lab number, and then specimen cut-up is performed. And most specimens, especially skin ellipses, are cut up in a bread loafed fashion. And this produces pieces of specimens about 3 to 4 millimeters thick. And uh, a section is a piece of tissue that is microtomed with a very sharp knife of the surface of each piece. So this is what happens when specimens cut up. We use these uh, cassettes, and um, the specimen is placed within these plastic cassettes, and this is placed within formalin in these buckets and placed in the process of overnight processing. So a specimen ellipse looks like this, and we ink it to uh, delineate the margins uh, when we look at the sections under the microscope. We usually cut bread loaf sections through it horizontally, across like this, and uh, place the different sections, or sometimes we place more than one section in each cassette. Uh, this is what a uh, bread loaf or a slice of the specimen looks like. There's the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous fat. And this is what happens once the specimen has been processed and then embedded in wax. So in other words, we um, this is an ellipse of skin with a lesion on the surface. We um, bread loaf it, and then we microtom a very thin section, about five microns of the surface of each section, whether it's in one cassette or multiple cassettes. And these uh, sections are then placed on a slide with the patient's name and uh, lab accession number. Sometimes with smaller punch excisions, we uh, perform multiple sections through the lesion without bread loafing the slice, and these sections are placed sequentially on a slide. So this is the first section, the section section, and the third section, and we have two, uh, two um, sections from each um, level. And this is what a tray of slides looks like uh, once they've been prepared and stained. Um, in this uh, in this wider uh, in this wider example, um, you can see here these are three sections of a punch biopsy: first, second, and third, with the patient name. Uh, this slide has two levels on it, and uh, these are sections, for example, of an ellipse of skin. With uh, with which has been cut into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, slices of a bread loaf. So, how much of the tissue is examined initially? Because we only cut a very thin section of the surface of the tissue, in most cases, well less than one percent of the total sample ex is examined routinely. And obviously, there's a very fine balance between the costs of cutting many sections and the need to examine representative amounts of tissue to make an appropriate diagnosis. So I thought I'd just illustrate this with a case report, uh, illustrating when to ask for more levels, making sure that the pathology results correlate with the clinical impressions. So the patient was a patient of mine who was a 60-year-old lady with a well-defined nodule on the left upper lip. This is growing gradually over a few months and was essentially consistent with a nodular BCC. But because it was on the upper lip and the lady wanted a biopsy, I did a 2 or 2.5 millimeter punch biopsy of the lesion. Unfortunately, the pathology report came back as solar damage with solar keratosis, and this was a report by a very good dermatopathologist. And that got me thinking, as you should think, this report does not correlate with the clinical nodule. If, for example, the report came back with, with uh, benign dermal nevus or small epidermal cyst, that would be more consistent with the nodule. But a, a diagnosis of actinic keratosis is not consistent with the, with the slow-growing nodule on the lip. So think about it correlated with the clinical circumstance. So this is what level one looked like. This is the epidermis, sun damage, sun damage dermis. There's a bit of sun damage and solar keratosis on the surface and a bit of an inflammatory infiltrate. Level three looked very similar. And this is essentially what the uh, pathologist reported on. But because there was uh, some uh, discrepancy between the clinical and the pathological um, uh, diagnosis, I asked for deeper levels in uh, the laboratory. Level five showed a similar thing. But here in level 6, we began to see little strands of basaloid epithelium infiltrating within the uh, dermis. And this is highly suspicious of uh, uh, morphic basal cell carcinoma. And in a slightly deeper level, you can see, deeper level, you can see lots more strands of uh, infiltrating BCC throughout the dermis. A similar report 
was uh, was uh, a similar patient of mine was this uh, report of a squamous cell carcinoma. Again, in the initial levels, there was nothing much to see, but uh, when one asked for there's a little nodule here, but this was actually not squamous cell carcinoma. Again, in the initial levels, there was absolutely no squamous cell carcinoma, and there was solar damage with an inflammatory infiltrate. Uh, but only in the very deepest levels did we, did we find um, squamous cell carcinoma, which is all this uh, squamous epithelium here, extending to at least two or three millimeters deep within the dermis. So one may have to perform many extra, le extra levels to find the lesions. It's important to know that uh, further levels can delay the um, the uh, sample. Um, in many cases, to save time and add the diagnosis, we do more than one level initially. But there's obviously a balance between too much doing too much initial lab work with unnecessary levels and not doing enough, precluding diagnosis and delaying the diagnosis. So the extra workload can take between uh, uh, three and twenty-four hours, depending on the workload in the lab. So if there are delays in processing the uh, sample and you don't get results, this may be because the um, the uh, uh, we're asking for deeper levels. So the teaching points about this case is that we routinely examine only a small sample of the tissue submitted to the lab and remember to ask for deeper levels or further opinions if the pathology report does not correlate with the clinical impression.